Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite CSS properties called Backdrop Filter. Now, what is the Backdrop Filter CSS property? Well, basically, it allows you to change the appearance of elements behind another element. Okay, so in order for this to work, you need to have something that is transparent, such as this modal right here. So I've set up a really quick example of a modal window as we can see on this page here, I can click on the show modal and we have these transparent backgrounds and of course the modal box. So I'm going to be leaving this code down below if you want to, you know, open it up and edit it at the same time as you watch today's video. But we're going to be using this modal as an example to demonstrate the power of the backdrop filter CSS property, okay? So going inside the text editor right in here, I wanna show you what we're actually dealing with. So we have the button at the top here, then we have the modal. Now, the modal overlay is simply just the entire container, including the opaque background. Then of course, the modal content is the white box in the middle. We've got a few headings and some paragraph tags of dummy text. Then right down below here, we have the JavaScript, which of course makes the button work and allows the modal to be toggled visible or invisible, okay? Heading inside the CSS, we've got something like this. Different colors on the H1 just to demonstrate a few things later on. And of course, targeting the modal overlay, a position of fixed in the top left corner with a full width and height to cover the entire page. And of course, right here, the background, the 50% black background, okay? Now, of course, when the modal is actually visible, we've got that display of flex to, of course, you know, allow us to center the content in the middle. And that's all we need to know for the CSS and the HTML. Now, heading back into the browser, I want to take you through some of the things you can actually do with this backdrop filter CSS property. You can do things such as adjust the brightness. You can add a blur effect, which is quite cool. You can uh, adjust the hue. You can do contrast, you can do grayscale. There are many things you can do. So I'll be leaving a link to also this page right here, the documentation on this property, and you can explore it further. But let's have a quick look at some of those things. So going inside the CSS file, let's target the model, sorry, the modal overlay and go down here and we'll say backdrop dash filter and we can apply some of those things. Let's have a look at the blur value. We can say blur just like this, then I'll say two pixels of blur. I'll press plus here, okay? Going back in the browser, refresh and click on the modal and we get that blur right there. So you can apply things like that to the backdrop filter property. Another example would be uh, the brightness. So we can say brightness here and we can just say something like 50% because 100% brightness is the normal brightness, but 50% is gonna be darker. So I'll go back in the browser, refresh, click on it, and we get a darker background. Let's make this something like 10% uh, and try again. Uh, refresh, click on it, and it's much darker. So that's another example. Uh, we've also got grayscale. So we can say grayscale just like this, and we'll say something like 100%, 100% grayscale. Go back in the browser, refresh, click on it again, and we get that grayscale right there. So like I said, there are many different options you can choose. Blur, brightness, contrast, drop shadow, grayscale, hue, rotate, and so on. So I'll let you guys explore those values right there. But you can also provide multiple values at once. As an example, going back inside the CSS, let's apply a grayscale and also a blur of three pixels. Put a space and specify the second or, uh, you know, however many uh, more values you've got. So going back in the browser, refresh here, click on the modal, and we have that blur as well as that grayscale. So combining multiple properties or multiple values, should I say, at a single time. Now, one cool part about this CSS property here is that it is actually animatable, which means we can combine it with the transition property. Let's make it so when I hover over the modal, it's gonna, uh, let's just say, it's gonna make it grayscale. Okay, let's go back inside here now and remove this backdrop filter property and replace it with a transition on the backdrop filter for 0.5 seconds. So of course, now this just means that it's gonna take 0.5 seconds for the backdrop filter value to change when it changes. To define when it changes, we can just say here, modal overlay, then just say colon hover. So on hover, we're gonna adjust that backdrop filter 
and just say something like uh, grayscale and you know what we might as well also include the blur so we'll say grayscale 100% and a blur of two pixels just like we did before I could save this now go back in the browser refresh now when hovering over we have that change let's hover out and it goes away hover again and it comes back so you have that ability to animate that CSS backdrop filter property now when is this useful well I could think of quite a few examples here first example is a navigation bar let's just say you have a pop-up or slide out animation from the left or the right side when the navigation bar is opened, you may want to make the rest of the content on the page blurred or darker and so on. So of course, you can use that property right there. Another example might be a meet the team uh, page on a business website. You've got a bunch of thumbnails for each team member and of course a name when you hover over that particular thumbnail. When the name is visible, it might blur the background or make it darker once again so you can more easily read the text that's, you know, overlaid on that particular image. So there are many use cases for this CSS property and I hope that you find one. But that is all for today's video guys. Hope you enjoyed this one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.